Shiny Charizard is staying below 200 just like you predicted. We're going to open up one of these products, whatever one is most likely going to get our money back, and we're going to talk about the set that is most likely going to go up in value this year. This is Pokemart. What is up? I'm Moana Turtle and this is Pokemart where we look at the TCG secondary market and try to figure out what's going on. Um, I'm not sure if this could be a regular thing, but once again, we're going to open up a sealed product, either the Trevnev Pale Moon box or this Meowth VMAX, whatever one is more likely to make our money back. The answer may not surprise you. All right, we're starting off looking at Trev Dusk Noir and man, this thing still boggles my mind. All right. The, on TCG player, this guy is still going for almost $14, and the jumbo card lowest price is listed at $9. What do people do with these things? And why would you spend so much money on a jumbo card? That still boggles my mind. Reminder, if you find this thing at Target, this thing will MSRP for $20. So just these two values alone already exceed that $20 price tag. And uh, comparing to the Meowth one, uh, so Meowth, this is actually not too bad. Like this card is still holding 450, uh, 550, including shipping. I wonder if this is just because it's still new, but maybe not not too long future. This card will go down. The Meowth, I feel like, isn't too bad. By f I'm kind of curious. I kind of want to try the V Max in online play to see if this thing is viable. You do have to evolve it, but 300 HP is pretty good. And you know, throw this into any welder build, you can get this GMAX Gold Rush attack pretty easily, and you're drawing cards every single time. This guy's going for eight, nine dollars after you include shipping, but the jumbo card is only for three, so the Trev Noir definitely wins that battle. Although, when we say jumbo card, like <laughs> I think it's ironic that the jumbo cards have shrunk. The Trevnev is def or all the other ones are definitely bigger compared to the V Max. This is the Gigamax cards jumbo card <laughs> smaller, which I find hysterical. And uh, I'm not saying that's why it's priced lower, but I don't know. <laughs> I just find that really funny. Um, looking at the code cards, and they're about even. This it seems like online the Pale Moon GX code is getting lower, so it looks like you can pick this up for three dollars. I think at one point I uh, they were more like six. And the cards are still, these are all sold listings, so these are, and the promo is still going for like 12 card, $12 on eBay. Gulking at the Meowth VMAX code, uh, which you get both cards for, and this one is still above $3. So I would say they're about equal, so definitely we'll open the Treb Noir box at the end of the video. All right, let's go into our usual spiel. We're starting with Cosmic Eclipse, and I think at this point things are pretty settled, and they're all really low. Um, Charizard breaks in. Oh, I did put a filter for Near Mint, uh, so I think this guy started around 100, and then you know a couple weeks into release was about like 60, and now he's all the way down to 30. Uh, and it seems like a lot of these other cards are staying pretty high. Caitlyn Cynthia, I think, will be useful for quite a while. Same for Rosa, Mallow, and Lana. Uh, I feel like I really very rarely hit encounter red and blue, uh, but all these ADP variants, these secret rare variants of ADP, still very good card. Um, and taking a look at that Charizard, Charizard breaks in, actually this one's even higher. So actually no, I, I stand corrected, it's about 40, not that 30 that I said. That must have been for light played or damn mod played one or something like that. So Charizard breaks in the biggest card in the set is hovering around 40. Let's go to eBay and ooh, this guy spent I feel like this guy overspent. $65. Oh my gosh, 85. What? Uh, but then from there, we're kind of looking at that uh, anywhere from high 30s to $50, 60, 50. Uh, one thing I want to point out is like that is the this is the newest set and that is the most expensive card And one thing I want to draw like if anyone has ever thought about playing competitive um, Maybe I feel like if you have any interest in it now is a great time I can't speak for how exciting it was previously But right now I feel like the standard meta is so exciting It's ever-changing and it's not I feel like it's not that expensive to get into let's take a look at the most recent tournament um, results on Limitless Games, a great website, Limitless TCG, 
and uh, so Brent is not doing a good job helping me demonstrate this point. So okay, so the deck, the deck that won first place is pretty expensive, but this is like the perfect storm. You got the Jirachis and the Denny's in here, so that one is over two hundred fifty dollars. But then second place, ADP Perds under a hundred dollars. All you need is a couple ADP, a couple Bird trios, and those guys aren't that expensive. I think the most thing might be a common custom catcher that you need to get four of but then it keeps getting lower guardian just over a hundred but then as we keep going down uh, that's another me too list uh, let's see oh Ge tina chomp which i feel like a lot of people are raving about right now this is the wheezing variant you can put together this deck for under 62 dollars 60 78 that is really good price for a top tier deck so if you're interested in trying out IRL play and there's some kind of local tournament you can go to I think it's a really exciting time to jump into it and you can do so at a very affordable price all right let's go on to hidden fades a thing that's super exciting to talk about um, although things are getting more and more stagnant Charizard still at the top but 195 so this guy is maintaining under that $200 price mark in the last video a lot of people were commenting that oh I think it's going to continue to go down maybe get close to that $100 mark I disagree with that but it's still going down um, and let's take a look at eBay alright so this is if you want to pick one up right now and it seems like or it seems like this is always gonna be the case where eBay like if I just happen to pull one I want to sell on eBay I'm gonna put it at a higher price and it's kind of like that feeling where once again if it sells awesome if it doesn't sell I'm okay with that I'm just gonna hold on to it but even still you still see a couple of two hundred dollars let's go to sold listings and kind of see the same story everything a lot of them above 200 here's a pristine 10 for 2100 man don't Feel bad for that guy that picked it up at 10,000 a while back. But you still see some, probably some that are well centered, maybe have a good chance of getting PSA 10 uh, coming at 2, 260. And, but let's take a look at Cynthia. The other card that is next highest uh, looks like has been picked up for about 30. I think every once in a while you see something lower, but seems to be hovering around that 30 to $40 mark. Uh, PSA 10, Charles. Shout out to Lou who actually. Uh, picked up, got his tent, his card graded, and he did get that Gem Mint 10. Uh, and everything seems to point towards hovering around that $500 mark. Um, but uh, 10 doesn't seem that hard to achieve. Everyone's on it's a 450. So that's where Charizard is hovering right now. Um, so next, I want to jump into a pretty exciting topic, which is, all right, what do we think might be something we want to look at it come this year 2020 and uh, a couple of videos ago two days ago or whatever uh, we picked up a new PSA car shout outs to Garfield that hooked us up for it it was a PSA 10 uh, gem mint non holo Charizard expedition from 2002 and that's the set that I'm going to or the era that I'm pinpointing as this is what I want to buy into come 20 this year and I think pretty confident that it'll definitely go up uh, we picked up that Charizard um, and then I actually had a conversation on Discord with Lou again uh, kind of talking about how he picked one up a hollow version uh, PSA ver PSA and we we're kind of like talking about oh we think it's very likely to go up and then today on reddit <laughs> or I guess yesterday there was a post so Pokemon TCG uh, reddit subreddit and I feel like this sub, uh, you know, more often than not, there's just pictures of shiny Charizards where people are so excited that they pulled it and they just shared pictures. So oftentimes not a lot of super valuable information, but every once in a while there's some cool posts. Here's one from Play Hobbits and basically asking what in your opinion is going to go up in 2020. Uh, we had <laughs> bored poopless, uh, had a very, very, um, in-depth post about how you know people are moving away from the base set jungle so maybe that's the prices are pretty good there and then a little bit later sets the neo and later might be on the rise but then towards the bottom is what i want to zero and i already highlighted it also i 100 percent believe single cards and expedition are going to explode in value let's take a look at what other people thought there's only two other comments e-card series i think will increase in value more than any other set and e-reader sets are popping off <laughs> i feel like everything i look at is like hmm e, uh, the e-reader series maybe that's where i should be looking so we're going to take a look at some 
some of those cards and there's a lot of them so we're only going to look at the the prices for a few of them but i think the way i'm going to approach this because there's like three of these sets is i'm going to find look at find the cards that i just really like i really appreciate the art or whatever it may be and i'm going to just gonna zero in on those uh, I definitely don't think uh, starting from scratch, you know, to finish a set will be very difficult and I might not do that. I'm probably just going to uh, go for very specific cards and the first one is this Blastoise. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this before. This card looks amazing. I love it. He's just kind of, he's he's hunting something even though you know his turrets are out of the water. Um, he's definitely, you know, he's kind of like a like a lion or something is about to pounce on something uh, so I just love this art and one thing about this set one thing I why I pulled this page up is I want to look at the supply like maybe some of these cards actually some of them are super expensive but some of them aren't that expensive it's more of a situation of can you find it you might not have cost that much but just good luck finding one if we just look at the pop report less than 50 tens and less than a hundred nines this is a card from 2002 there's not going to be too many of these graded in the future if we look at the prices, um, yeah, maybe, I'm not sure if we'll pick up a 10 for, you know, somewhere around 200, maybe probably more, uh, but a 9 or less than $100, we're definitely good for a 9, if, if, <laughs> if not more than one. So I think PSA 9 is where we're looking for this Blastoise. I love this art. And again, this, my recommendation would just be look through the cards. There's a lot of cool different stuff in there and figure out which ones you think just appeal to you just because you really like the card. Uh, Charizard is an obvious choice, but once again, I want to zero in on the pops. Uh, 34 tens and less than 200 nines. Um, obviously, the prices are... Actually, this one's interesting because like, you know, okay, there's only 30 something of these tens, so therefore the price is pretty high. That makes sense, but actually this one's been on the down downward trend for quite some time and maybe now it's picking back up and it seems like there's a lot of hype around this expedition set and while the the nine seems pretty stagnant but obviously this is a charizard it's hollow so it's pretty higher all around even the nine is around two hundred dollars but yeah one to zero back on this 34 tens 197 nines i believe i have yeah this shiny charizard back uh and Pokemon makes his he has to make one more appearance and look at these numbers 460 tens and only 139s like it's so so it's the exact opposite of these expedition cards where yeah again this pop report probably isn't going to increase that much uh so and these that explains why this thing is just on a continued downward trend trend down versus these expedition cards and now going forward, these are just cards that, you know, I'm not going to focus on the price, but we'll, we'll scroll down every once in a while. But I just want to talk about like, all right, these cards just look amazing to me. I just want them in my collection and I want them graded so that they, they don't have to worry about them ever getting bent or anything like that. And I know they're in very good shape. So this Tyranitar, I love this art. Um, you know, the, the, just the name Tyranitar, obviously it's kind of like, Tyrannosaurus and this art you know it look it feels like oh my gosh it, it maybe doesn't look like a Tyrannosaurus Rex but like it feels like there's just some big dinosaur walking past so that's why I love this art we'll take a quick gander all right yeah so the PSA 10 is pretty expensive but the 9 once again under 100 I'm totally gonna look to pick up one of these Zapdos look at this art this card looks really cool once again less than 150 PSA 9s or 10s uh, Okay, the prices are kind of all over the place, but it doesn't look too bad. One thing I think is funny about this card is this card actually sounds terrible, though, as far as the game goes. With an ability that says you can't attach lightning energy to your Zapdos. <laughs> you have to flip a coin to get energy attached to it. So as far as a playable card, it sounds terrible, but this art looks amazing. Next, I think I have a thing for Golem. Whenever I see it, there's so many Golem cards that look amazing, and this is one of them. And uh, so during this era, there was this idea of crystal types, which I believe uh, kind of makes these cards pretty expensive. Maybe that's why there's a lot of these graded. Uh, so significantly more of these graded, and probably the prices reflect that. Yeah, pretty high. So for all these, I think it's just like, all right, what is the range I'm looking at? And if I can't get a 10, whatever, 9, we'll go to 8. Maybe we'll go non hollow It doesn't matter. I just love these arts, and I feel like it's a very, very good time to pick up some of these e-reader cards. We only have a few left. This Ho-Oh, this thing looks amazing. This almost looks like it's another crystal type. I don't really know the, uh, the 
backstory of the crystal types but i just love this art it still looks like a like a cave painting or something like there's all this mythical pokemon and this is just like a picture of it that was drawn <laughs> i don't know where i'm going with that but let's look at the pop report under 50 tens and under 69 so few of these graded and oh my gosh very few sold that's what i mean once again it might be you know it, it might not be maybe the prices aren't super high but just good luck finding a listing or maybe that's the most difficult part about that process so just something to keep an eye out for going forward is like all right are any of these on sale articuno i like this art this one's not as epic as all the other ones but just you know look at these numbers again uh less than 150 of these beat that were graded 9 and 10. and the last one all right, I think I'm officially on the Umbreon hype train. You guys convinced me Umbreon is really cool. And so this guy is also on my list. I really like this art, just like kind of looking at that full moon, under 110s, under 109 or 129s. And once again, Umbreon, I, apparently everyone's a fan of Umbreon. This guy is pretty expensive. We will probably have to go down to, man, maybe we can't even pick up this guy. I think there's not that many like sevens sold in recent times so even eight's pretty high maybe this one will have to go non-hollow but uh, this umbreon is another e-series card that i think the art looks amazing and this is the kind of stuff that i'll be looking to buy into come this year 2020 so all right before we get into this trev noir box reminder uh, if you did enjoy this video let me know in a comment down below hit that like button subscribe for future videos if you're not already bell for notifications all right let's uh let's open up this box oh if there's any topics you'd like to see covered let me know in a comment down below as well all right, I'm playing this one safe. We're going to remove the promo card after the fact, just because I've done, I've damaged way too many things from these gosh darn tabs. And uh, I think some of them were, had a big enough dent that I feel like, I'm not even sure I could play this card in a tournament. <laughs> That's how much damage it's done. But here's the code card. And <laughs> we'll just leave this in the background like that. You're not sure what it looks like? Oh, you can still see it. And it looks exactly like this. That's the zoomed in version. He's not in the background, but that's okay. And we do have our four pack. So by some, I'm not sure why, but 14 and eight. <laughs> that eight really, uh, really confuses me. But there you go. Uh, from TCG player prices right now, that's $22. That's already basically the MS over the MSRP uh, before tax, obviously. But we do have a Steam Siege pack, Lost Thunder, and two Unified Minds. So let's see if we can't make this a very successful opening as far as getting our value uh, from the price that we paid for this box. All right, starting with Steam Siege. Uh, I don't think it can really happen here. But what are you gonna do? Although let's we'll see if we can. There's still some cool stuff to pull. Gardevoir, that's something cool that you can pull. Clef key, a fossil, Chimchar, nose pass, Litwick, a Dino, Ponyta, another Litwick, and then just a Gastrodon. All right, Lost Thunder. Some good stuff in here. Maybe a Blacephalon GX would be amazing. Zero Aura Lugia is being used right now. Ooh, I think we got something. All right, we did it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we have something. And this is not the disappointing opening that happened in last week's episode of Pokemart. And what did I do wrong? I need to move these guys up here. There's still no energy. All right, I'm not sure what's going on. Oh, okay, Sunfist. I thought that was a rare. <laughs> Okay, there's it. There it is. All right, I'm not sure what I just did, but there's the energy card. What? I don't know what happened. Brion. Maybe these cards are just out of order. Trumbeak, Ninjask, Vampy, Marini, Wurmple, Yamask, Popplio, Super Cute, and then whoa, Blacephalon, just like we wanted. Very still some Blacephalons out there. Uh, I feel like I see more of the baby version versus the GX, it's just straight GX, but uh, there we go. This was definitely a very, very good opening. Definitely got our money's worth. And um, yeah, it's not, it's pretty rare that a product like this can actually make the money back pretty consistently. So whenever I see these in Target or Walmart or wherever, it's 
usually I would usually be like, eh, I'm just gonna pick one of these up. <laughs> Reset stamp, that's a good card. Compared to the Meowth one. So actually a funny story about the Meowth V Max is so obviously I wanted to do an opening as soon as that product released. So I went into a GameStop and picked one, Electros. But then my pre-orders came in, which were cheaper because I pre-ordered it. Significantly cheaper. I think before tax I was like 23. But ultimately, actually to be honest, the secondary market value on the secondary market is higher than I expected, but I think it's going to go down. And but um yeah, it's uh, now I have a bunch of them from my pre-order, so maybe we'll do another opening of that in the near future. All right, so for our last pack, for a very good opening, we have a Dratini, Fungus, Honedge, Sneasel, Magnemite, Onyx. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. This was an amazing box. Right, We got the alternate art of the Raichus. This is one... I feel like the... Um, these guys were really good for a while, but at least online, it's been quite some time since I faced many electric decks. I feel like it's just a little slow, even with the, I guess you do have a little bit of ramp with the Thunder Mountain and Coco. But uh, yeah, I haven't seen this guy used very often, but he is still a really good card, and that's such a fun art. Um, Raichu's kind of being bullied by the Alolan one. So there you have it. That is how you open a sealed product and actually can make a profit out of it. It's pretty rare, so whenever we can do it, we'll take advantage of it. But uh, that's gonna be it for Pokemart. As always, guys, like, comment, and subscribe all down below. If there's a topic you'd like to see covered on this show, let me know in a comment. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'm Moana Turtle, and I'll catch you guys next time.